Welcome to Machu Picchu. In this video, we're going to be showing you how you can visit this incredible site for less than hundred pounds or dollars. Ready? Let's go. There are many options to get to Machu Picchu, including the traditional Inca Trail, the Salkantai, the Jungle Trek option, and taking the trains. However, we decided to opt for the minibus option. All of the options vary in price um, and availability, especially the Inca Trail. So make sure you book that well in advance and look at the weather when you do so as well. We went with the minibus version because it was the cheapest and we'd all look so been sick beforehand. So we wanted to basically take the easy route but have a little bit of walking as well. This is how we got on. So it's about eight o'clock in the morning and we're just waiting for our pickup to go to Machu Picchu. We're taking the cheap and easy option and getting the bus up. And it's gonna take most of the day, it includes a bit of hiking as well, to Agus Calientes, which is the town before Machu Picchu. And now we're just a short walk to our pickup. Uh, we're taking the minivan and there's a couple of stops along the way. And we'll let you know what those are like as we get to them, I guess. The minivan option picks you up from hostels and hotels in Cusco early in the morning and arrives at the hike location at around 3pm. It was bumpy and cramped but did provide some stops, even if some of those were because of traffic. The scenery was incredible, driving through the clouds on the edge of a cliff, it's not for the faint hearted. made it on the minibus to oh my god it was awful. well we don't exactly know where we are we have stopped off for the lunch at a restaurant uh, it's actually three o'clock in the afternoon the bus was very very windy around these roads they're not really roads they're very small and tight few enclosed counters with other vehicles coming the other way <laughs> but we're heading to a bridge where we think we're going to get to the other side and it's going to be the start of the walk from hydroelectrica to the uh, Agros Calientes, which is the Machu Picchu town. Should take about two, two and a half hours. Yeah, I'm uh, excited. It's like I'm doing the Inca Trail. But not yeah, really. we can say we did it because it includes trekking. <laughs> and when we're there, we're going to hopefully meet a guide. Um, there's been a little bit of a uh, lack of communication as to what's going on so we're kind of on our own so this might be us we might be stuck out here forever yeah. who knows um it's the cons i guess of paying for a cheaper tour rather than taking a much more direct train uh, but you know all these things are only temporary and we are going to get there and the main thing is we're going to see match feature tomorrow and also it's very beautiful out here i know more drink you will. So we just found the checkpoint where you have to register for the trail. Uh, there's a car coming, I'm gonna get wet, hang on. You see, so they obviously got dropped off at Hydroelectrica and we didn't get dropped off at Hydroelectrica. So where actually are we? <laughs> Still don't really know where we are. Maybe we're walking to Hydroelectrica to start the trail, but we had to do a checkpoint anyway. So I think we've made it to the park. Apparently we're walking alongside the train tracks. So fingers crossed the train doesn't come along and squish us against the cliff. But um, it should take about two hours and then we've got to try and find our guide. Uh, we have no idea what he's called or what hostel we're going to stay in, but we will make it and we'll get to Machu Picchu tomorrow. It wasn't too busy walking along the track. You can walk at your own pace and taking the views of the mountains, the rivers. Sometimes you have to move aside for the train. There are a few places you can stop for food and drink along the way, so bring some small change. At times the track was actually just the rail over some small waterfalls and it did feel a little bit unsafe. Not too bad though. 
seven. So we've done seven kilometers and we've got four to go. Not too bad. Apart from the fact that I need a wee. I would just jump on the train. Agros Calientes is the town before Machu Picchu. We stayed here the night before and the night after, and the cheaper option allows you to be a bit more flexible with your days, so it allows you a little bit longer on the Machu Picchu site. It was a little bit confusing, so here we are in Agros Calientes to help you out a little bit for when you arrive. So when you arrive in Agros Calientes, the tourist information station is just here on your walk-in. Uh, they'll tell you where to get to your hostel, uh, bits and pieces about where the hot springs are. Um, but also, if you need to meet someone at the main square like we did, um, then go across the train tracks, up the steps, and then it's, it's literally like a minute walk to the main plaza. meet our guide in the main square and so far it's just a load of people just shouting out names um, only a few have got signs we have no idea who we're looking for we've not been given a map or anything and it's a little bit ridiculous definitely a con of taking the cheaper option so update it's Machu Picchu day uh, we managed to find our guide check into the accommodation and get dinner yesterday it was all a little bit of a mad rush and we had to change rooms because of an electrical problem but we are going to Machu Picchu. We've already got the bus tickets. And it looks like it's blue skies, so hopefully we can see it all. Oh, <laughs> you can't see it on the camera. There is blue skies. Sunshine! I don't think we've seen proper sunshine in a while. So we're going to head down to the bus now. Probably going to be a bit of a queue as it is um, the week of Easter. It's very busy in uh, in Cusco and in, in Peru in general and the surrounding area. I think a lot of local people are visiting for holiday as well. Um, we've got to meet our guide up there. We've, we've taken a picture of what the flag is going to look like. So we're going to be like one of those tour groups with the flag. So after an hour and a half of waiting in the line, we're finally on the bus to go to Machu Picchu. Nobody told us that there was a system where, judging by the little entry time to Machu Picchu, it means you can only get the bus a certain time. We're told buses go every 10 minutes. Uh, we're supposed to be meeting our guide five minutes ago. Um, so hopefully we're gonna get there and we'll be able to get in, no problems. It's very busy as it is Easter week. I think it's just very busy in general. So if you are coming here, definitely get your bus ticket the day before as well. And if you're walking, you can get there at any time. So I don't know why it matters about getting a bus at any particular time, but be prepared for a lot of waiting, but hopefully a big reward at the end. To help keep the cost down when seeing Machu Picchu, you can take a hiking trail which goes up the side of the mountain instead of taking the bus. So if you want to skip a long line or get here earlier, you can take this option. It only takes about 45 minutes to an hour or more. Well, depends on your level of fitness and expertise, I guess. And it's free, whereas the bus is about $12 each way. So, it still keeps it just under $100 uh, dollars or pounds if you did take the bus up and down, 
but you get to experience some of this spectacular scenery for longer this way. When you arrive at Machu Picchu entrance, don't forget to get your stamp and your passport. The entry to the site can feel very busy and touristy, as it's a small path up to the mountainside. But keep going, you'll get your first glimpse of the world wonder. So we made it. Hey. We are at Machu Picchu. <laughs> Not without other issues, <laughs> such as our guides that we're supposed to meet for the English tour. He's not here. Well, well he's he here, but he's refusing to speak he English. Want to speak he's just English. got a Spanish group. So we're having to wait till quarter past twelve to meet up with an English group. So we've just been told to walk to a place um, as part, house? part of the site, and then we'll wait for someone that's going to speak English. What a load of nonsense! It's quite nice though, because the Warrior House is where you take all the classic views. So we're going to stay there, just watch it a little bit until we have to do our walk. Being flexible and staying in Agos Calientes one more night meant that we didn't have to rush around the site. As we waited at the top for our guide, we could see tour groups coming and going, and they didn't stay up the top for that long. This is actually Machu Picchu Mountain, meaning Old Mountain, and this is the historic site of the ancient Incan Empire. This is the area where the royalty and the higher society lived, and past the green lawns is where the workers lived. We walked down and entered through the gates of the royal area. If you were poor, you would have had to walk around this section of the site. Despite the large number of people visiting Machu Picchu, it didn't feel too crowded. They do actually limit the amount of tickets that can be sold each day, and they give you an actual time slot of taking your tour. You do need a guide as well to see the majority of Machu Picchu, but at the end of it, you're allowed to walk around by yourself. If you want to go to Brina Picchu, which is a big mountain just behind Machu Picchu, you need to book months in advance, as only 400 people can go up a day, so it gets booked out pretty quickly. This area is known as the Sun Temple. The Incas worshipped the sun and made offerings to it. They believed if they celebrated and made sacrifices on the 21st of June, which is the longest day of the year, the Sun God would bring them a good harvest for the year to come. Towards the end of the guided tour, we got to see where the workers lived. Here, you can also spend more time without a guide. This allows you to take in the views for the final time, take some more photos before heading back down to Aguas Calientes. That evening, we relaxed by taking a dip in the thermal springs in Aguas Calientes before we went to dinner. However, Gemma, what just happened? Uh, the power went out the whole hotel. So we were at the hot springs and the lights were flickering a little bit and we thought maybe it was isolated to just there or the top part of the street. And it turns out we were sat in the restaurants and the whole ship's gone down. <laughs> At least we had a shower, right? That was our time in Machu Picchu. The next day, we headed back to Hydroelectrica by hiking the same route in reverse, and we got on our minibus back to Cusco. It's a little bit confusing when you get to Hydroelectrica as there are a lot of minibuses, but go to where you got dropped off and you should be okay. So just a little summary of the pros and cons here for you. The pros are obviously the price, it's so much cheaper than getting a train, and also it's a little bit less effort than walking four days on the English Trail or all the other trails as well. Um, but it's also really good that you get to do a little bit of trek just around the perimeter of Machu Picchu. And now for the cons. So one major con is a little bit of a lack of information. You are kind of passed from pillar to post here with not knowing the names and the contacts of everyone. 
but you do get there eventually, even if it is a little bit stressful. Yeah, just remember that you're kind of booking separate bits of the trip. So with one company, you'll get the minibus. With another company, you'll get um, met by a guide. Another company will be the hostel. And then another company is going to be the tour around Machu Picchu. So if you remember it's separate things and none of them really talk to each other, then that's absolutely fine. And the only other major con is some places have a little bit of lack of English, but generally in this area it is well spoken and you can get by on some basic Spanish. Another pro that I forgot to say was that you can actually take your time with this cheaper tour. Um, so you're able to have two nights fairly cheaply in Aguas Calientes rather than having the one, going to Machu Picchu and then rushing back to get your train in the afternoon. This means that you can enjoy things like the hot springs in Aguas Calientes and take a little bit of time to chill and chat and remember your time in Machu Picchu. Okay, so now for a few recommendations. Make sure you research in advance, especially if you're doing some of the treks. They do sell out um, months in advance, so make sure you get yourself on one of those. If you are doing the train or the bus, you can buy it in Crisco fairly easily, but just go through a couple of the agencies, look on trip price and ones that are recommended. Um, you will get pretty much the same deal with everyone and you can barter it down a little bit as well. Um, if some of the tour companies promise you a sunrise tour, look into it in advance. Um, go on the Machu Picchu website itself because they do sell out pretty quickly. We were going to tour companies, they were saying the sunrise option was available and then they look into it further and it wasn't. Um, so sometimes you're going to the agencies and kind of telling them exactly what you want around the availability that you've seen before. So just be a little bit clued up. And also, if you can, try and get good weather for Machu Picchu. It is obviously mountainous, so it does vary a lot. I went six years ago, and this is what happened. It was rainy, we'd done the trek, and everything had been good up until, and unfortunately we got caught out. Luckily this time we got good weather. As we were walking back to Hydroelectrica the next day, you could see it was a little bit cloudy, and if we'd have gone on that day, maybe it wouldn't have been as nice. So it is very variable, and you do have to have a little bit of luck involved but just try and plan as much in advance as you can. So we hope our time in Machu Picchu has been useful for yourself if you're planning a trip there. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as we are heading to the Amazon in our next video and we will see you there. This has been Travel Bubble, see you later.